Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're delving into the important role that digital technologies play in improving women's health. Thanks to Femtech, taking care of yourself has never been easier. These new digital platforms have made women's healthcare more accessible, convenient, and personalized, enabling the dissemination of accurate and up-to-date health information. In fact, 62% of all health app users are female. In this episode, we welcome a trailblazer in the femtech field, Ida Tin from Denmark. As the co-founder and chairwoman of Clue, a menstrual tracking app used by millions worldwide, she's contributing to redefining how women across the world understand and manage their reproductive health. Ida, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, it's a real pleasure. I'd love to start by hearing about the story of Clue. How did you get started? You know, I was in my late 20s. I tried to be on the pill and it didn't work so well for me. And at some point I was wondering, why has there been so little innovation in family planning methods since the pill came out? You know, we put people on the moon since the pill came out. So I decided that I wanted to try and make a new type of birth control. So that was, that was how I started. So Ida, we know that menstruation and women's reproductive health issues have long been surrounded by taboos and myths in many cultures. I think we could actually probably say almost every culture on earth. And how is Clue contributing to breaking down these barriers and promoting open discussions about women's reproductive health? I think having data that shows what's actually going on is really helpful. It enables us to go and advocate for ourselves when we go to the doctor's office, but it also brings this part of life kind of out into the open so that we can see it's it's another part of life that we can use technology to support us with and where we need to be educated and where how we think about it culturally really matters. And you and I are lucky because I'm here in a studio in Geneva and you're there in a studio in Berlin, but not every woman uh, everywhere around the world has easy access to health services or indeed even to health service information. And how is Clue reaching women who otherwise might not have access to other options? You know, it's amazing because there are so many women out on the planet who has access to mobile phones who don't necessarily have access to healthcare services. And with that, they have access to all the information and um knowledge really that is on the planet so what we're trying to do is to take really scientifically valid information and make it accessible to people uh, through how we talk about it the language um we we don't sort of dumb it down but we explain it in a way where it doesn't feel threatening or scary or kind of unaccessible. Shifting gears a little bit now, Ida, I would love to hear more about how you've been using intellectual property in your journey, because we know that IP is increasingly playing an important role in technology fields. So tell us what has been your journey with IP and how have you used it to support Clue? Well, it's definitely important to try and protect the things that you've built uh, that are uniquely yours. Um, we also know that we are only um, as protected as we can go and enforce our patents when somebody might infringe them. Um, but one of the things we did was that we trademarked the word femtech. And the reason we did that was not because we wanted to own it, but we wanted to make sure that nobody else owned it so that it could stay a commons good. Um, so I think, you know, in consumer tech, really what you're building more than anything is your brand and uh, trying to have a brand that's distinct enough that people will see who you are, even if somebody tries to copy it. And of course, many people have copied elements of who we are, but I think at the very essence, you will keep innovating from that place of your own DNA and nobody can copy that. So IP plays a role, but I would say in our part of technology, maybe not as crucial as in other parts. I'd like to ask you about another important element of technology-based innovation, and that is data privacy. Um, and you have said in previous interviews that it's very important that your users understand how their data is being used. Could you tell us about how do you protect user privacy? 
Um, and how do you ensure that your customers understand how their data is being used? Data privacy is something that's super close to my heart. And I'm actually happy that we're based in Berlin because this is probably the strictest place um, on the world when it comes to data privacy. And the reason why this is so important to me is because we are asking people for their most sensitive health information. And we really only can do our provide our service if people share this very intimate data with us. And for me, it's been really crucial that we build a business model that is very transparent and easy to understand because I think how you make money defines who you are. So the way we make money is that people pay for using premium features of the product. And that's the only way we make money. And that also means that we're not selling data. We're not sharing data in ways that are intransparent for our users. Um, and I think it's really important that we keep having strong regulation in tech because that's how we ensure people's data privacy because Honestly, I think as a consumer, it's very difficult to understand which tech companies um, do what with your data. And this is also a very big educational aspect. How do you teach people what happens to your data? And we've been trying to write uh, blog posts and kind of information to our users to explain what actually happens when you enter one data point and clue, where does it go? There are parts of the data that we share with third-party data providers or service providers. And... This is not to be confused. So if I tell, you know, if I share your email with the tool that I use so I can send you a newsletter, that's very different from me sharing your health data with somebody who might want to sell you another product. So we're trying to educate people these different distinctions. And it is complex. Um, you know, I can barely say the words, you know, it's it is definitely something that needs uh, a lot of awareness and a lot of Care also because I think a lot of users they maybe think already well you know my data privacy is already gone you know I'm using a free product so I pay with my data but I I don't think that's actually true I think it does matter how we as the ones building technology think about these things and what choices we make. I would love to hear about your success stories and how user feedback is shaping the future of your products. I mean, it's absolutely essential what our users tell us. Um, we actually rebuilt the whole app last year. And the reason why we did that was because we wanted to be able to add new things to the product much faster. Because what we typically hear from our users is that they'd like to track more things and in more detail. Um, and we wanted to make that possible. But people tell us that it's empowering, that they get to know their bodies, that they can get better care when they go to the doctor because they can show uh, what's going on um, because they have the data we hear I mean we hear all the stories from oh my god I realized I had a pregnancy outside the womb it saved my life or you know I'm an opera singer so that um, it matters where I am in my cycle because it affects my voice so there are these kind of extreme stories but the really core core is that people can live better in their bodies live and feel more at home. Ida what do you think is the future of femtech? You know, it's incredible because we have built technology that can do kind of anything in our life. We, you know, we can share cars and get food and all these things. But there really was this big part of life that tech had kind of overlooked and under-researched and under-innovated in. And I think more and more women are realizing that we have a whole spectrum of needs related to our biology and that technology really can play a role in solving for these needs. And that's what we're seeing now. So we are, you know, we're taking them one by one. Right now, menopause is the big thing having people get diagnosed and manage things like endometriosis is another big thing happening right now. And I think we'll keep seeing women kind of demanding and expecting that technology can really help with all the needs we have because of the biology we live in. And then I hope that we can have the data that we now track in all these different apps and maybe we do a hormone test there and we do a blood test there that we can somehow bring all this data together so that it can really work for people, it can really make a difference in how they think about their health. So there's still lots of work to be done. Ida, it has been an absolute honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Ida's pioneering work continues to inspire and empower women worldwide to take control over their health. We look forward to witnessing the continued growth and impact of Clue and other femtech innovations that empower women to better understand and care for their bodies and their minds. To our viewers, 
thank you for joining us. Please share your thoughts about our discussion today in the comments below. And stay tuned for more engaging conversations by subscribing to the WIPO channel for inspiring videos that showcase how innovation and creativity shape our world and our lives.